Hello everyone, the topic of this video is gate determinant. Here are contents. I don't think we need another explanation to move on next page. With the parameters we studied before, can we distinguish the healthy gate from the pathological gate or identify one's gate? Those parameters are not enough to do this. Gate velocity and step length would be different between when you take a walk slowly and when you are in hurry to catch the train. So there are six determinants of gait. Pelvic rotation, pelvic obliquity, knee flexion in stance phase, ankle mechanism, foot mechanism, and lateral displacement of body. The first, we will see the pelvic rotation in detail. We can observe it in the transverse plane. To see how much the pelvis is rotated, we will measure the angle of the rotated pelvis. The interesting thing is, when the pelvic rotation is bigger, the hip extension and flexion become smaller. As a result, the hip vertical movement is smaller. As you can see, the abstract walking image in the sector plane, you can see the up and down hip movement is smaller. The next is hip obliquity. The coronal plane is the best viewpoint to observe this. When you walk, the double stance and single stance phase are repeated. In the single stance phase, one leg is support the body and the other leg is swinging. The stance phase is extended and the swing leg becomes shorter because of knee flexion and ankle dorsiflexion. flexion. In this period, the level of right and left hips are different, so we can observe the slope of the pelvis, which is pelvic obliquity. If the slope is higher, the hip vertical movement and trunk vertical movement will be more different. This is a walking avatar in single stance period shown in the coronal plane. And there are two graphs on the right side. The upper one indicates pelvic rotation and the lower one demonstrates pelvic obliquity. For the pelvic rotation, we can take the rotating angle around the z-axis from the pelvic orientation. So we know how the pelvis is rotated around that axis. For pelvic obliquity, we can take the rotating angle around the x axis, which is anterior posterior axis. So we can observe how much the slope is made. This slide shows the graph when toe off of the brown leg leg occurs. Pelvis is rotated, the right hip is your head and the right hip is higher than the left hip. This is a mid-swing phase of the left leg. The pelvic rotation is middle of the peak, which means the pelvic rotation is smaller, even if the value is around 63 degrees. There is an offset because the angle is based on the global coordination. For the pelvic obliquity, the slope is also almost zero. We also consider it has offset, for example, one degree. At the terminal swing, the right hip is high again, and the left hip is ahead. Now, it is the double stance period, but it is right before the swing phase of the right leg. So we can see the opposite value to the first graph. The left hip is ahead and higher than the right hip. We move on the next determinant. This is the abstract image of the leg in sector plane. With this image, we can explain three determinants. The third determinant is knee flexion in stance phase. We will measure the knee flexion angle in the mid stance phase. The first one is the ankle mechanism in the initial stance phase, which is during heel strike. 
The fifth one is the foot mechanism in the terminal stance phase, such as at the heel rise and toe off. We will see the determinant through the extensed ambient studio. There is an avatar in sagittal plane. The right foot is at the initial contact. So for the ankle mechanism, we focus on the ankle joint angle in the red box. This graph shows degree of the ankle. The increasing value means dorsal flexion and decreasing value means plantar flexion. The next is the mid stance phase of the right leg. For the knee flexion, we have to focus on the right knee joint angle in the red box. The increase means flexion and decrease means extension. This model of avatar shows a small knee flexion during stance phase. The fifth determinant, the foot mechanism in the terminal stance phase. We can focus on the ball foot joint angle in the red box. The increasing value is a flexion, the decreasing value is a extension. Now we can see the toe is extended. The sixth determinant is lateral displacement of body. The above five gate determinants are the movement to reduce the excursion of the center of gravity. The sixth one is about side-by-side -side movement. If the gait width is larger, the center of mass moves more in lateral direction, like left image. If the gait width is smaller, the lateral movement is reduced. With the Extended Ambient Studio, there is an option to observe the lateral movement. We can observe it in transverse plane. We check the heel strike point of the left leg. And we take the neck to heel strike point. Then we can find the oscillation on the X Y coordination system. We can measure the peak to peak value as a lateral displacement. This is the end of the video. Thank you for your attention.